Welcome back guys. Last video I talked about water methanol and why you need it. This video is about E85. All right, so before we get started and dive into the details of E85, I am going to humbly ask you to click that like button. If you're new to our channel, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Um, every like does help boost our algorithm. So, okay, without further ado, let's get started. Last video, I actually made about water meth injection. I'll link that up here. That actually got really, really popular. So I wanted to follow that up with E85. I know a lot of people heard about E85. People you know, know a lot of people using E85 to make additional horsepower for their cars. And things like that but the concept of it you know you're not really sure how it works and you want to know everything that's involved in it before you start switching fuels in your car because potentially it could be dangerous um, to switch fuels like that without proper knowledge and proper modifications to go along with it okay so let's get started today all right so what is e85 you've heard the term right but it's basically the E stands for ethanol, and 85 stands for 85%. So technically, E85 means there's 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. That's what E85 means. Pretty simple. So what do you need to know about E85? One, that 85 number is just a round figure. What do I mean by that? E85 actually can vary from 51% to 83% of ethanol content within the E85 pump. I don't know how they can go about calling it E85 when there's such a huge variation. However, you really, really need to pay attention to this because depending on the percentage of the ethanol content in the E85 fuel you just pumped in your car, your car needs to have the ability to read the content and adjust the tuning inside your ECU accordingly. Woo, headache, right? How are you going to do that? Are a lot of ECUs able to do this? The answer is no. A lot of the ECUs in your cars do not have the ability to read ethanol fuel content. So, if you've seen um, a lot of the GM vehicles, you know, Chevys and things like that, where you will see on the back of their trunk, it will say flex fuel. What does that mean? That means that car from factory has the ability to run E85. And that means it's able to read the ethanol content and it's able to change the uh, the ECU tuning related to the ethanol content. So, you know, as in, you know, your timing and everything changes. Um, depending on the ethanol content. And that's what the flex fuel part of that little badge means. So let's dive in a little further. And I'm going to tell you what ethanol does for your car and why a lot of tuners want to do E85 and how you can prepare your car for E85, even if the car was not built for flex fuel to begin with. Okay, so first of all, benefit number one, is E85 has a very high octane level. So it's, even if on the lower mixture side, like a 51%, you're still looking at around 98 octane. And you know when you're jumping up to the 83% um, of the mixture, it's going to be around 106-ish octane. So it's pretty much cheap race gas. So there's one benefit, meaning, you know, now we can push more boost, we can push more um, advanced timing, and we can even push leaner mixtures. And because the story um, mixture of E85 is different than regular gasoline, so, you know, now I'm getting into the science part, so let's just kind of cut that part out. But to, basically, you're going to make about 20% more power with E85. Now. One other thing that I've been noticing, you know, we've tuned so many cars when comparing water meth car to a E85 car. It seems that the tuners have an easier time 
making power out of an E85 car versus a water meth car. Okay. I don't want to discount water meth because water meth is still a really, really good system. Um, but E85 just tends to make a little bit more power, especially in NA form. Um, but when it comes to boost, uh, boosted forms, water meth does about the same thing as um, E85 does. Now, with that said, E85 also cools your cylinder temperatures, you know, prevents you from knocking, pre-ignition, and all the good stuff. But there are downsides to E85. Like I said before, if your stock ECU is not made for flex fuel, there's no way it can tell what the mixture is. Um, so it doesn't have a way of adjusting um, its internal tune to accommodate for the different mixtures of the E85. One other thing is E85 does require about 30% more fuel um, to do the same thing that gasoline does. I mean, E85, again, makes more power, but E85 will spend 30% more to make that power. If that, if that makes sense. I mean, it's basically, you know, do you get 300 miles to your tank or do you get 210 miles to your tank? That's, that's the difference you'll see there. So the, you will usually see savings at the gas pump when you're pumping but at the end of the day because of the decrease in mileage you're probably going to be spending about the same amount of money at the pump as if you were spending money for a regular pump gas i mean i don't know if that's a minus because at the end of the day if you're spending the same amount of money as pump gas and making 20 percent more power so i guess it balances each other out all right now I think the biggest question after I tell you all this is how do I make this work in my car when my car is not flex fuel? Okay. So a lot of these cars, I'm going to say some of these cars have the ability to add flex fuel to it um, or had the ability. So Subaru, for example, if you were to have cop tuning um, done to it in the past few years, you were able to buy their flex fuel kit, which their flex fuel sensor actually gets wired into the OEM ECU, uses one of the ECU's original um, signal wires and actually replaces that for the E85 content. And then Cobb wrote a separate map where you're able, the tuner is able to um, use a blend map where they, they will assign values for the ECUs to look at depending on the ethanol content. This recently actually got canned because epa cracking down on everything so maybe in the future Cobb will return with it depending on how they figure out their way around epa but that that was how flex fuel was done before through cars that Cobb supported now the only other way right now to to fully fully support uh flex fuel in cars that didn't come with flex fuel from factory um, is to run a standalone system Usually standalones like Haltech, Link ECU, they will have inputs where you're able to input an ethanol content sensor and it's able to give you a blend map where it's able to change depending on the blend, the depending on the ethanol content you have in the fuel and it does it in real time. Um, and your tuner will have to obviously tune for this to happen, but once you have this tune set, you really don't have to worry about what kind of ethanol content is in your car. You just go to the pump, pump it in, and then you're done. Um, the only downside, again, to this would be, let's say, you know, you you dynoed your car at 83% ethanol and you were making 600 at the wheels. And then two weeks later, you're empty, so you go ahead and pump. And then the E85 pump that you pumped at is 51% ethanol. That day you're not making 600 wheel horsepower anymore. You might be making 550, okay? Because the ECU has now self-adjusted, you know, pull back timing, pull down the boost to make sure that you're not going to detonate at a lower ethanol content level. So your car's not going to have consistent performance every time you pump. So you just have to know what's going on with your car at all times and, you know, be happy with the, uh, the amount of, variation your car can have depending on the ethanol content one way to fight this is you can actually buy e85 like not from a pump but as in barrels where they are actually measured out to be the highest content possible 
Um, you can do it that way and store the E85 container at home and pump it yourself if you wanted to do that. So, I mean, that's, that's another way around the whole variation. So with that said, what's needed to run E85 other than the ECU, okay? Other than the ECU, what you would really need is bigger injectors and better fuel pump. It depends on the car. Certain cars, uh, especially like the direct injection cars of late, you're usually able to just pump E85 and everything will be normal. You know, the, the pumps are able to handle it. The, uh, the injectors are able to handle it and such. But normally with older cars that have, you know, multi-port injection with the injectors, um, you usually have to upgrade them because the OEM injectors are not flowing as much as the fuel, fuel required. And like I said, you know, E85 uses 30% more fuel. So you would need the fuel system to accommodate that extra flow that it requires. So a lot of times you will need to upgrade the in-tank fuel pump and you also need to upgrade the injectors to accommodate. And depending on what kind of material your um, fuel line is, sometimes you do need to upgrade your fuel line as well because ethanol is corrosive. So, so there's that. I feel like I'm deterring you away from using E85 after making this video, but I mean, the benefits are there. So if you have an E85 uh, pump near you that you can always get to e85 is a great fuel to use um, you just need to have supporting modifications to do so um, e85 also burns super clean compared to gasoline so you know like if you have a if you have a sports car and you're getting on it all the time you'll notice that there's black soot on your rear um, tailpipe that's actually not from you running rich most of the time it's just the way gasoline burns it doesn't burn hundred percent clean so you're gonna get that unburnt soot on your tailpipes if you look at an e85 car their tailpipes actually remain super super clean for the most part all right you're gonna get a little bit of soot here and there but it'll take them far far long longer to actually build up that carbon deposit on the back compared to a gasoline car. So that right there will tell you how clean E85 burns compared to gasoline. So, I mean, there's that benefit as well, okay? Um, only time I would recommend that you don't really run E85 would be if you don't have access to it. Because unfortunately, certain states really, it's it's hard to find E85. And that's when water meth comes into play and you wanna, you know, you wanna sway that way because water meth wise, it's easier to, easier to buy, easier to find. You can just order, you know, boxes of water meth and just store it in your garage and just fill your tank as you go. Okay, so last part to this is how to run E85 in cars using the OEM ECU, okay, without flex fuel. Basically, you have to keep on top of everything. So what you would do, let me make a, an example of one of the most common cars that we do. It's a, it's like a Genesis Coupe 3.8. Okay, a lot of people run um, E85 on the Genesis Coupe 3.8 by using our um, E85 conversion kit. Basically what it does is it will place an E85 ethanol content sensor into the line of the OEM fuel line. So it's in line with it. So it basically reads the ethanol content within that and displays it inside of a gauge that um, that you put inside the car. So what we would then do is basically tell the client, hey, you need to maintain this level of mixture at all times. So normally tuning at around 50 to 55 percent ethanol content and just making sure the client stays around that or above that is basically the only way to tune for E85 on cars that don't support flex fuel. Um, this happens pretty often now with a lot of cars out there because not all cars can be supported with standalone, especially direct injection cars. Standalones are hard to come by that supports them. And if they do, they are super expensive. Like, Motec is one of them, but yeah, it's not a cheap modification to do in order to put a Motec in your in your car just to run flex fuel. Okay, usually that's 
you will run Miltech if you're doing huge builds, you know, doing crazy 700 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower, 2,000 horsepower cars, um, and not a 300 horsepower car with the 85. So it just doesn't make sense to do so. All right. Um, another thing is certain cars do not have the ability to run full E85. What I mean by that is certain cars only have the ability to upgrade their fuel to a certain level. So their fuel system, like the injectors are very limiting. The fuel pump is limiting. There's no aftermarket solutions for it. Um, but you still want the benefits of an E85. What people will do is what what they call an E30 tune. Basically what you do is you mix E85 with gasoline at the pump. And there are specific calculators for this to help you out, but it still requires you to have the ethanol content sensor with the gauge so you can keep your eye on it. But you know, with that said, when you mix it, you wanna mix it to about a 30% ethanol content. Like I said before, 93 usually has 10 to 15% ethanol. So you just need to add a little bit more of an E85 in order for that 30% to happen. And with that 30% bump, you know, you're probably looking at what, like 96 octane. This is just off my head. My calculation might be off, but it is a little bit more boost on the octane level. It still has the uh, better cooling capabilities with the extra ethanol inside. So people are able to make a little bit more power. Um, what kind of cars do this? Normally like Focus STs, you know, Veloster turbos, Veloster Ns. Um, Usually direct injection turbocharged cars are the ones that settle for the E30 because they do not have a usually a way of upgrading their fuel system to handle the extra um, fueling needed to run full E85. All right. So, I, I mean, I hope this video kind of helps you out, narrows you down to how E85 works, what it requires, and, you know, eases your decision on whether if you want to do E85 or go with water meth. Right, say so they they both have pretty comparable um, features. I think the only feature that water meth has over E85 is the fact that water meth is sprayed before um, the throttle body, so it cleans everything inside your intake manifold, your valves, and things like that. Whereas an E85 is sprayed through your injectors. So if you have a direct injection car it is still not fighting the carbon deposits that happen on the top of the valves. So that's like the only thing. And sometimes depending on where you live, E85 is hard to find versus, you know, with a water meth kit, you can just order cases of water meth and, you know, it's easily stored in little gallon jugs that it comes in. So I hope this video uh, clears things up. If you have more questions, you know, make sure to comment below. Again, like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.